couple people requested that I do a time-lapse video of one of the models I was painting. Here I'm just doing a base coat of Army Painter Poison Cloud. This will help us build up some nice tones later on when we apply some washes to the model. We allowed the poison cloud enough time to dry, so now we're going to do a wash paint. This is Army Paint's a green tone. It's designed to flow into recesses and creases on a model and fill them up with a small amount of pigment. It also helps to bring some other tones down so closer to the color of the wash that you're using. The tone is dried, so now it's time to move on to the jaws on the chest of this model. We're going to be using a base coat of Citadel Jean Steel Purple for this, because I don't like the initial colour that they have on the box art, which is closer to a bleached white colour. I'm now painting the parts of the model which are supposed to be bones. I'm using a colour by Tamiya with an identification number of XF57. It's known as buff, but I'm not actually sure what colour it's supposed to be. It does work very well for bones and horns in my experience though. I'm just repeating the process for the things coming out of his shoulder. They appeared as bones in the box art, so I'm doing them in the same colour as before, which is to me a buff. This model had a piece of cloth running down his pants, so I decided to do those in Army Painter Crusted Saw. It's more of a maroony dark red, which I thought would contrast nicely later on when I applied some washes to it. A side note, this part was very painful to film because the cloth is not conveniently located for filming. The next part was all the tentacles. For this, I used Tamiya Pink, which is X17, and Reaper Master Series Dead White in a 50-50 mix. I quickly realized that these colors were not going to mix together very well, so I decided just to use Tamiya Pink. Luckily, I hadn't done too much, otherwise this would have gotten very annoying. Next it was time to shade the jaws, for this I used Citadel's Agrax Earthshade Wash. This was just to help it not be such a bright purple colour, and bring it to more towards like a dirtyish, sort of purpley hued brown almost. I intentionally left a small amount of lip so that it would help bring a sort of highlight without me having to do anything. Next it was time to shade all the tentacles. For this I used uh, Citadel's Drooky Violet Wash. This was just to make sure that it wasn't such a fluorescent and like bright pink 
wanted it to be sort of a dirty pinky purple almost. It's a weird description, but I like the way that the color turned out. Here I was just adding some darker tones towards the bottom of the shoulder bone things. I used the Army Painter's Werewolf Fur. This was to help add some darker colors towards the bottom and to help break up the consistent and even color to help add some more contrast to the model. Here I was just doing all the pipes and such of the black details with Tamiya's X1 Black. This isn't a particularly interesting part, so I've sped it up considerably. It's much later at night by this point, as you can probably tell from the background. Uh, this was the point where I decided to do all the pustules and the weird pimple things. I used Tamiya's X4 Yellow Green. Here I was doing the sword and some parts of the guns. I used the Army Painter's Gunmetal Tone because I felt that Tamiya's Gunmetal works for Chainmail much better as it is considerably darker than the Army Painter's version. Here's the part where I added some of Citadel's technical Nurgle's rot paint. This dries into a rubbery green sort of stuff. I applied this on top of all the pustules and also on the teeth inside of the jaw. This was to give it more of a corrupted and disgusting look. I highlighted the cloth with the discontinued Mechorite Red from Citadel. This was a already lighter color than the cloth, so it helped me highlight it a lot easier. Here I started doing the body of the rifle in Tamir's XF-16 flat aluminum. Uh, I also did some other various metallic parts in this paint, but much like the black, it's not very entertaining to look at, so it's also been sped up quite a lot. Here I did an edge highlight on the rips in the fabric using Reaper Master Series Magma Red. This was a very quick part and didn't really take a lot of time. I also took this time to add some Seraphim Sepia which is a yellow tone to the skin. Now early the next morning, I applied some Vallejo Liquid Gold to the metallics the previous night. I would have filmed this process, but it dries quite quickly and was hard to film, so I didn't include it as the filming was pretty bad. I applied some Seraphim Sepia over all the green parts to help bring them down to the brown that I mentioned earlier in the video, avoiding all the metallic parts and the bones. We're now at the last part that I recorded. I'm just doing in all the chainmail parts of the armor on the models. I stopped filming shortly after this because it was just a few minor touch-ups and then sealing. I'll put some finished pictures of this afterwards.
And here's the finished result. I used some Poison Cloud and Goblin Green on the bases and then applied some Nurgle's Rut over the top. Thank you for watching the video.